Surrounded by Walker County deputies and media, Tommy Ray Brent Marsh arrives at the bond hearing dressed in a bulletproof vest. His wife Vanessa and his sister Lachey Marsh are both in the courtroom along with family members of victims and masses of media. There's nothing in the Georgia Code that says if there's a lot of media attention, don't let him out. Sheriff Steve Wilson testified. He says the department has received numerous death threats on Marsh, one as recent as two hours before the hearing. He says he hasn't seen this type of anger in the community in his entire 25 years in law enforcement. But the unusual nature of this case would lead one to reasonably infer that this defendant had every reason in the world to flee if he's given the opportunity. Defense attorney Ken Poston presented a letter from the Marsh family to Magistrate Jerry Day. He says the family is praying for the victims. In all due respect to their concerns, nobody got killed up at that tri-state crematory. What's up, you guys? Chet Guthrie, the Dream Poet here, coming to you all from a cemetery out here in Noble, Georgia. Now, Noble, Georgia, it is a small, unincorporated town in Lafayette. It's pretty small. Um, but today, guys, I figured we would cover a rather tragic topic, a rather sad one. Um, and the best way that I can put it is imagine it is 2002 you are a hiker and you are hiking in this particular wooded area now this wooded area it is right next to a crematorium to be more specific the tri-state crematorium and out of nowhere your dog brings you a bone now at first you assume that it is a uh, it's some kind of deer femur or some kind of other mammal. But then you realize that bone that you find, it is actually a human femur. The cops are called, they come in, and it doesn't take them that long to produce a, uh, a skull. This is the beginning tale of the Tri-State Crematorium tragedy. And you see, just behind me right here, this is where the property of the crematorium once stood. Now, when all of this took place and all these bodies were found, all the buildings were torn down and an acre of this was set aside by the marshes for the land to essentially recover, grow up, and uh, hopefully to let the bodies of those who were discovered rest. Now, we are going to explore some of these locations today of the old compound. And we're going to see what's left. We're going to talk about what is probably one of the most tragic, one of the most tragic stories of human or bodily or body disposals in modern times. And in order to tell that story, we must go all the way back to 1996. The year is 1996. Ray Brent Marsh, he has to drop out of college at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga to take over the family cremation business. Now, the Marsh family, they have a pretty good business of this going on. They have a vault business that they build for the cemeteries, and they also have cremation services. Well, Ray Brent Marsh, takes over the family business seems that everything is okay up until about a couple of years later when a truck driver makes an anonymous call that he was over at the property and he saw bodies just laying out in the open out in the open hot sun the elements and well nothing really comes of that now fast forward to more years when epa the epa epa of Atlanta gives that gets an anonymous tip that again bodies have been seen laid out in the open decomposing what have you and once again they come out here to really find that nothing is going on 
Well, this is where we get to the beginning of our story, as I mentioned. There was a hiker out in this area. She was walking her dog. She finds what she believes to be, at first, an animal's femur. It actually turns out to be a human femur. Cops are called out here. They look through. It doesn't take them that long to find a skull. And, in the process, over 300 bodies are found on the property, laying out in the open. One of those being a body just laying out on the top of a building with a baby, the feet of baby of a feet or fetus of a baby, body of a baby laying at its feet. Here beyond this gate is where the old compound once stood. And it was on this same road right here that federal agents had to come through, drive through, and this is where they did there, or I should say, there. Uh, uh, this is where they ran their case. This is where they found over 300 bodies. Now you all are probably wondering, why would a man do this? Why would he let over 300 bodies go and decay? You see, Ray Brent Marsh, he did not do things intentional, or at least they say, um, after he was hit with a 12-year sentence, it was theorized, after all this was said and done, that he was exposed to mercury. You see, in a not-so-ventilated, well-ventilated area, and you are burning cre or cremating remains, you will be exposed to mercury, like with fillings, like especially old-school fillings. And what this does is uh, as it burns, you'll get hit with it. Well, Ray Brent Marsh, he later described that he had the same symptoms of what it is like to be exposed to mercury poisoning. So as this all happens, families are getting their family members or what they believe to be their family members back, only to later find out that what they have been given is concrete dust, concrete cement, dry concrete cement it was not their loved ones it was it was dust and out of all the bodies ray brent marsh he cremated about 1500 of them on the property while of course they found over 300 bodies they didn't really find anything wrong with the cremation machine itself so that wasn't the case actually when all this was going on they actually found out that uh one of the bodies was still hanging out of the cremation machine when the FBI agents were doing their collecting for their case. And now we have come to where the crematorium once stood. And now it looks like nature has running its course. Nature is growing up. Trees are taking over again. And here in this spot, Imagine these big large buildings, a big cremation machine that allegedly is not working. And Ray Brent Marsh is doing his best that he can. Only to find out he has desecrated over 300 corpses. And speaking of desecration, here's one of the remains of the buildings that was left over from this crematorium. Looks like it was a barn at one point, but obviously, as you all can tell, it is no more. It's really sad to think that all this happened way back when. Now at trial, Ray Brent Marsh, he will answer the questions of those who are wondering why all this happened. And well, his answer, he pleads the fifth. He has no answers, which only makes me think that he was probably under the influence of mercury poisoning. And here on the property too, there also is a shed left over as well. I don't really think there's a whole lot left over of it. Let's check it out. Yeah doesn't really look like there's a whole lot left over. 
So they say all the buildings were razed and destroyed, but it looks like there is one building that is left over. Now, obviously, it has seen better days. Honestly, I'm getting the chills a little bit. Doesn't really look like there's a whole lot of anything in there. Other than that. Could that be it? I mean, I know they got rid of the cremation machine. I think really that's just a front or a, what do you call it, a fireplace. So I don't think that's it. There's no way that that would still exist. Now, after all this happening... It has been about 21 years since all of this took place. And quite honestly, with as much of a tragedy as it was, it's good to see that the land is taking over again. And if you look over here in this area, you might be able to see it. But there is a lake that is out here on the property. And when all this was found out about and they were searching for the bodies that could have been left over out in the hot sun, well, the FBI, they drained it. Now, they didn't find anything, but they did drain it. And this is it right here. Now, obviously, there is nothing left, of course. And speaking of bones, we have found ourselves a bone. But you all have nothing to worry about. That is actually part of a deer pelvis. Now, I did go to school for forestry. And I do understand a great bit of wildlife. So y'all don't have to wonder, don't have to worry that this was a human bone. No, it's not. But that is interesting and ironic that we found an animal's bone where human bones were found about 21 years before. That's weird. Very scary. I want to put that back. But I honestly wonder, what was this house used for? It does look like it was a trailer at one point. Obviously, nobody has lived in it in quite some time, which is a good thing, I guess, because I don't think anyone would want to live in a building like that. Although it does look like at one point it was pretty nice, but obviously it has seen better days. I've been hitting a lot of spider webs. This is eerie. Like the whole time, I feel like I'm being watched. Which from one blogger who went to this site, they said the exact same thing. So I think, I think we're gonna get out of here. I don't know what it is about some of these areas, but something about it just gives me the creeps. So you guys, Y'all are probably wondering what happened to the 344 bodies. There was about 334. Well, not far up the road, there was a, a cemetery that took the remains in and they gave them a memorial. So we're going to get out of the hot sun. We are going to pay our respects to these bodies that were desecrated. Plus it's getting hot too. Now while it might be really hot outside, it is really peaceful out here. It's calm. Not really a whole lot of a cloud in the sky. We have gone from a place of darkness to a place of light. We are here at the Tennessee Georgia Memorial Park. You see, after the events of the Tri-State Crematory Disaster, this cemetery right here, the Tennessee Georgia State uh, Memorial Park, they took these 344 bodies and they built them a really nice memorial. And you know what? It's the name of it is very peaceful, it, you know, and it it kind of shows that transcendence from the light or from the darkness to the light. 
the healing tree above you rests a healing tree with branches to the sky its roots planted deeply connecting you and i its shape its trunk its stature represents your life the trials and tribulations the joys and the tears the strife from the healing tree i shall take a ring shaped like a dove and a ring to hold precious memories of your unforgotten love There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. And here in the center, Garden of Peace, this section of the Tennessee to Georgia Memorial Park is dedicated to those loved ones who were discovered at the Tri-State Crematory on February 15th, 2002 and laid to rest in March 2004. May they, their families, have everlasting peace and consolation. And it looks like the, the cross, it lights up at night. So this is a very beautiful monument, a very beautiful dedication to a very, well, again, coming from the cremat or the side of the crematory where it once was, I just felt this really hev big heaviness, this darkness, this horribleness. But out here at the cemetery, the Tennessee Georgia Park or Memorial Park, there's nothing but peace out here. So I'm glad that these fa or these people who did not get a proper burial have found just such a peaceful place. Even in a long country road, as a truck goes by. And here is more to the memorial. Looks like part of a meditation slash prayer garden. It looks like the cemetery has put this out here for families of the loved ones to come out here and just think about them. To have their memories on them. Or pray, whether it be God or, well... I guess it just depends on whatever deity you believe but for a lot of these people i believe it's the big man upstairs or maybe this is the tree that they're talking about in the poem just look at that a bird just flying in the trees singing <sighs> if it wasn't so hot i would enjoy this a little bit more but it's just that all of this These people, they do have an eternal place of peace, as the memorial said. With summer coming to an end, you think the heat would go away too, but I guess not. But you guys, I wanted to cover something a little more on the sadder side, a little more on the tragic, and to really just pay my respects. But anyway, you guys, remember, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Always means a lot. It goes to show that y'all care and that y'all want to see more awesome videos. So without further ado, you guys, this vlog is over.